In this video you see why and when to use the factory method pattern and how to use it in Python. This is part 2 of a factory series. If you missed part 1, go watch that first. Look at this code from the last part. The importer factory class is a factory. It has a single responsibility. Returning an importer class instance based on a file extension. The factory switches on file extensions to create objects. This is a violation of the open-closed principle, but the problem is manageable because the switch is isolated in the factory class. No other parts of the code create importer objects. If you are watching this, you probably wonder how to create a variation of this code using the factory method pattern. The first thing to notice in the code is that the getImporter method creates either an XML importer or a JSON importer. The factory method pattern puts the object instantiation logic into subclasses. Notice both classes are subclassed from importer factory. Also notice that the method names in the subclasses are called createImporter. We are not overriding the getImporter method here. Instead, the getImporter method will call the createImporter methods. And since the factory subclasses inherit from importer factory, they will also inherit the getImporter method. Notice that in a dynamic language like Python, you do not need to define abstract method createImporter in the base class. Here are the base class and two subclasses. As you see, the subclasses are responsible for creating the importer objects. This technique is described in the factory method pattern where it says, let subclasses decide which class to instantiate. But this leads to an important question. If the factory subclasses decide what importer class to instantiate, then who decides which factory subclass to instantiate? I don't know about you, but to me this just feels like moving the problem back to main. And that is exactly what happens. Look at all the classes. Document takes an importer factory. This should be an XML importer factory or JSON importer factory. But since the switch on file extensions is gone, main is responsible for creating the correct factory instance. I'll create the code to import XML files. Here it is. Notice that an XML importer factory is created regardless of the file extension. The program is now configured to import XML files. So how can you import JSON files? Well, either you create a different importer factory instance here, or you create a new factory that creates importer factories based on the file extension, just like you saw in the beginning of this video. If this starts to dazzle you, you're in good company. It takes a while to wrap your head around all this. Just watch the video a couple of times and at one point it will make sense. What is important to realize for now is that the factory method pattern does not help us to prevent switching on file extensions. And although that sounds like sad news, it does make sense. Because every time when you want to create objects in a dynamic way, no matter how fancy your switching mechanism is, you will always need some mapper from values to objects. So even with factory patterns, there will always be a bit of open-closed principle violation. Write in the comments if you agree with me or not. So if the factory method pattern did not solve our switching problem that causes open-closed principle violations, what is it good for? Well, the benefit of the factory method pattern is the abstraction in subclasses. Let me show them again. In this code, it seems there is no benefit at all of abstracting away the class instantiation. The benefit will only become clear once more logic is added. The importer factory could, for example, check if the file exists before even returning an importer. This can be done in the base class because it applies to all importer factories. Perhaps the XML importer has a method to check the XML version 
and XML importer factories need to call it before returning the instance. Checking for XML versions does not need to happen for JSON importers. So there is generalized code and specialized code. Generalized code goes in the superclass and specialized code goes in the subclasses. And all this is just basic object-oriented design. The factory method pattern helps to put code where it belongs. Now remember when I said that the program was configured to import XML and how you can also configure it to import JSON? We can even take this further and create configurations that combines importers and exporters with a single factory. So check out the next video to see how the abstract factory pattern takes the factory method pattern to the next level.